The U.S. built a weapon so powerful, it didn't need explosives, just raw speed and steel. The Navy's $200 million railgun fired solid metal at over 8,000 feet per second, shredding ships from nearly 100 miles away. But after years of stunning tests, the weapon mysteriously disappeared. So why did the Navy shut down its most powerful gun? And what hidden risk made them abandon it? At the Naval Surface Warfare Center, the rail gun sat silent on the test platform. Its sleek barrel and gleaming rails marked 15 years of engineering and half a billion dollars in taxpayer funding. But this wasn't a traditional cannon. Inside, magnetism replaced gunpowder. When the countdown hit zero, massive electric currents created electromagnetic fields that hurled a seven-pound steel slug down twin rails. In under a second, it blasted out at 8,270 feet per second, five times faster than a rifle bullet. The math was terrifying. No explosives, no warhead, just speed. At hypersonic velocity, that seven-pound projectile hit with the force of an artillery shell. Speed was the weapon. Tests pushed the system harder. Early versions used eight megajoules. But the real beast was still coming. A 64 megajoule rail gun for warships. Power demands were insane. Each shot consumed electricity equal to several city blocks. Its range changed naval warfare. While normal ship guns reach 15 miles, the rail gun could hit 100 miles out with deadly accuracy. Enemy ships, coastlines, aircraft, nothing was safe. Footage showed the brutal beauty. A low hum, a flash of light, a deafening crack, and the slug vanished. Only the open ocean could safely contain such force. To the Navy, the weapon was both thrilling and terrifying. It needed no gunpowder, no explosive shells, cutting the risk of onboard detonations. But the cost was immense. Each shot drained enormous power. The rails wore out fast. Heat threatened to melt the core. Maintenance was constant. By 2021, reality set in. The Navy shifted its focus to hypersonic missiles and lasers. The rail gun, once a revolution, became a $500 million reminder of the gap between dreams and reality. But while the rail gun faded, another sci-fi weapon quietly emerged, one that didn't rely on impact but on light. On May 16, 2020, the USS Portland cruised through the Pacific. A small drone buzzed overhead, unaware it was about to face the world's first ship-mounted laser weapon. Mounted on deck like a telescope, the laser weapon system laws use solid-state laser diodes to produce an invisible beam of energy. No noise. No ammo. Just silent destruction at light speed. Radar locked onto the drone. Computers calculated its path in milliseconds. The laser turret swiveled smoothly, tracking its target with mechanical precision. Then comes the moment that changes everything. A silent beam reaches across the sky and touches a drone. It doesn't explode. Instead, its electronics shut down instantly. Circuits fry as the laser's energy overwhelms them. In seconds, the drone drops from the sky like a lifeless toy. Threat neutralized without firing a single missile. The test shocks military watchers worldwide. Sci-fi once imagined lasers like this. Now it's real. The USS Portland proves that future tech has arrived. Its solid-state laser hits multiple targets back-to-back, -back, switching faster than any human gunner. The Navy released cautious statements, but the message is loud and clear. Enemy drones, small boats, even missiles now face a defense that reacts at light speed. Old countermeasures are useless. Nothing escapes this instant strike weapon. And it's not just for air threats. Small enemy boats, like those used by pirates or rogue states, are easy prey. The beam can disable engines, blind sensors, or stop navigation without sinking the vessel. That gives commanders non-lethal, precise options. Power demands for these lasers are high, but manageable. Unlike rail guns, they can run continuously with ship power. Cooling is a challenge, but engineers have built systems to keep them operational even in long fights. The cost advantage is massive. Each shot costs about $1 in electricity. Compare that to million-dollar missiles. One laser system can handle hundreds of threats for less than the price of one intercept missile. Other nations are alarmed. Laser weapons are changing naval warfare fast. Countries without them now risk having outdated fleets. 
Power at sea now favors those with light speed defenses. Strategists see a new reality. Swarm attacks with cheap drones once overwhelmed defenses. Now lasers flip that script. Expensive threats are vulnerable to cheap, endless ammo from laser systems. But while lasers defend, the Navy's deadliest weapons still explode. And reloading the mid-battle is a whole new danger. Inside missile bays, crews load weapons that can hit targets over 1,000 miles away. The Tomahawk missile sits in vertical launch tubes, a sleek white tube packed with explosives. It's the Navy's ultimate strike weapon. Using terrain-matching guidance, it flies low to avoid radar, traveling subsonic for hours on preset pads. Its thousand-mile range changes naval strategy. Targets deep inland, once safe, are now vulnerable. Coastal bases, command posts, and infrastructure all fall within reach. With seven variants, commanders can choose from conventional blasts to specialized warheads. Beneath the waves, submarines carry their own deadly tools. The Mark 54 torpedo, over 1,000 pounds, packs Torpex, 50% more powerful than TNT. These silent hunters track enemy subs up to 10,000 yards away, using sonar to follow their targets. Surface ships can also launch these torpedoes from deck tubes, sending them speeding through water. Their advanced guidance can tell enemies from allies, making sure the right target is hit. But the riskiest moment isn't in battle. It's reloading at sea. In calm harbors, cranes lift heavy missiles safely into place. But at sea, with waves rocking the ship, loading becomes a dangerous challenge. One wrong move during the sway and pitch operation can turn deadly. Sailors must manually guide half-ton missiles into tight launch tubes, fighting gravity and momentum. One wrong move or moment of distraction can mean instant death. The Navy removed shipboard cranes years ago after too many deadly accidents. With rising tensions between Russia and China, at sea rearming is more likely than ever. Long deployments in contested waters mean ships may need to reload far from friendly ports. Ordnance crews train constantly, knowing their survival depends on flawless performance under extreme pressure. Rearming starts in darkness to avoid detection. Sailors in safety harnesses use hand signals to communicate over the roar of wind and waves. Missiles are hoisted by muscle and winches, carefully maneuvered as the ship sways beneath them. Modern missiles like the Norwegian Naval Strike Missile, NSM, add complexity. These can hit sea or land targets up to 345 miles away, but their electronics are fragile. Any mishandling could damage critical systems. Even with such powerful weapons on board, enemy missiles can still breach defenses. So what happens when a hostile warhead locks onto the ship? Modern naval combat follows one rule. Multiple defense layers must work together, or the ship is lost. When missiles come in at supersonic speeds, commanders have only minutes to respond. The first defense line starts far out at sea. NSMs on Allied ships strike enemy launch platforms up to 345 miles away, using precision guidance to track and destroy moving targets. Each missile packs enough explosive power to cripple or sink major vessels. Their smart targeting tech can identify and prioritize high-value threats like carriers or flagships. When fired in volleys, they coordinate strikes to overwhelm defenses. If threats get closer, the second layer kicks in. HIMARS, originally for land-based strikes, are now adapted for ship-based launch. These systems can fire everything from guided rockets to long-range tactical missiles. The M142 high-mobility artillery rocket system, HIMARS, proves its worth during coastal attacks or amphibious landings. Each pod carries six precision-guided rockets or larger missiles, able to hit targets with deadly accuracy. Its fast fire rate lets ships flood enemy zones with explosive power in minutes. But the most crucial moments come when incoming missiles break through all outer defenses, racing toward the ship faster than sound. Shipboard radars track them, while computers calculate exact impact points within seconds. Then the final defense activates. The phalanx closing weapon system, nicknamed Sea Whiz for its buzzing sound, is the ship's last hope. This auto-firing Gatling gun has six barrels and fires 4,500 rounds per minute. Once activated, it runs entirely without human input. Its spinning radar dome constantly scans within a five-meter radius. When it detects a threat, 
It locks on and fires 20 millimeters tungsten rounds, fast enough to rip through missile casings and detonate warheads at a safe distance. It can track and destroy multiple targets at once, switching between them in milliseconds based on threat level. The phalanx only fires when missiles are 1 to 5 meters from the ship, leaving mere seconds to react. At Mach 3, a missile crosses at distance in under 10 seconds. The system must detect, track, and fire automatically with total precision. No human delay allowed. Engagement ranges are kept deliberately short to prevent hitting friendly aircraft or missiles. The phalanx fires only when enemy projectiles approach within 1 to 5 meters of the ship. At such close range, the system has only seconds to detect, track, and destroy threats. Modern anti-ship missiles move so fast that engagement windows shrink to nearly nothing. A missile flying at Mach 3 can cross the phalanx's full range in under 10 seconds. The system must instantly detect, track, compute, and fire, completely without human help, relying on pure computing power and mechanical precision. When ship-based offenses are overwhelmed, the final line of response launches from carrier decks at supersonic speed. But what happens when mankind's most lethal machines become too powerful to control? On the deck of the USS Gerald R. Ford, red-suited ordnance crews prepped the deadliest aircraft ever sent to sea. F. 35 Lightning II sit. Like silent predators, their stealth design crafted to evade radar detection. These 5th Gen fighters are the peak of modern air warfare. Each F. 35 costs over $100 million and houses sensors that detect threats from hundreds of miles away. Its stealth coating absorbs radar waves, making it nearly invisible until it fires. Powerful onboard computers process battlefield data faster than human pilots, turning each jet into a flying supercomputer loaded with precision weapons. Ordnance crews, easily identified by their red uniforms, load guided bombs and air-to-air -air missiles with expert precision. These weapons can destroy warships or hardened enemy bunkers, and each crew member trains for years to handle them safely. Today's naval aviation dwarfs that have passed wars. A single F-35 can carry multiple precision-guided bombs, each capable of hitting targets over 100 miles away with surgical accuracy. Its internal weapons bay hides these payloads to maintain stealth. Loading massive 2,000-pound bombs reveals the raw firepower these jets carry. These bombs are programmed to hit specific targets with pinpoint accuracy. Air-to-air -air missiles mounted under the wings can destroy enemy fighters beyond visual range, tracking them by heat or radar signals. Flight operations start before sunrise as pilots prep for missions that could shift global conflicts. The F-35's helmet-mounted display shows targeting data right on the visor, allowing pilots to engage without using traditional instruments. This deep human machine integration boosts combat power, but raises serious concerns about where warfare is headed. As weapon systems grow more advanced, military leaders are increasingly worried about their long term effects. The F 35 program alone costs over $400 billion, making it the priciest weapon system ever built. Nations around the globe race to counter these jets, which outclass earlier fighter generations by wide margins. The speed of tech development grows faster each year. What seemed impossible just 10 years ago is now active in combat zones. AI integration is bringing even greater change, with autonomous systems now making targeting decisions without human input. Navy aviation teams see this evolution up close as new tech arrives faster than they can be trained. Missiles with 200-plus mile ranges allow a single jet to strike multiple targets. Electronic warfare systems can wipe out enemy comms from afar. The destructive power concentrated on one carrier deck now matches that of entire armies from earlier wars. This rapid growth in military strength creates paradoxes. Even operators feel uneasy using such tech. Veteran pilots say the weapons are so advanced they change aerial combat completely. Young ordnance teams handle arms that could spark global crises with one wrong move. The psychological pressure affects civilians, too. Nations without 5th-gen fighters are instantly outclassed, making their air forces obsolete. As power shifts to a few tech-heavy superpowers, global stability is under pressure. Observers watch nervously, knowing that weapons built for deterrence might not stay unused. The hope is that their full force will never be unleashed, 
But history tells a different story. 